দর্শক সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি বিরতির পর এন ইভিনিং উইথ আনোয়ার চৌধুরী অনুষ্ঠানে আমরা কথা বলছি আনোয়ার চৌধুরীর সাথে এবারে শুনব অনুষ্ঠানের এই পর্যায়ে আমাদের বাকি অতিথিদের বক্তব্য নেক্সট মিস্টার মাহবুব নূর সেক্রেটারি জেনারেল ডাব্লিউ বিসিসি এন্ড হি হ্যাজ কাম ফ্রম অল দ্য ওয়ে ফ্রম ওয়েলস my question is uh, based on um, uh, my background which is which is business and economy now that um, the uk is definitely leaving and there's not going to be a second referendum we're leaving europe do the bangladeshi diaspora have a role to play uh, between uk bangladesh uh, relationship in terms of building a trade relationships and what do you think a country a growing economy like bangladesh has to offer to the uk or does it have something to, something to offer to the uk and if so how it can uh, benefit both parties we are not the diaspora we are brits okay all right so it's, it's really important this we are brits okay we have this connection with bangladesh lots of challenges on brexit but i'm quite confident that this country will do well and it will do it through what you mentioned through trade we were our history is of a trading country as how all this started okay this is what we do okay <coughs> we will find ourselves um not just open to trade with the rest of the world including bangladesh but we have to trade with the rest of the world of necessity okay and i think that will eventually eventually make our economy stronger more competitive and we'll do well we'll do well the reason why i say all this and sometimes i joke with it um uh with with some colleagues if you look at today's world you can contribute almost 90% of it to our country whether it's the steam engine the worldwide web capitalism you know uh dna s- structure theory of evolution you know it doesn't matter newton with laws of gravity you know whatever wherever you look you see the contribution that this country has made to science to the legal system to all that so this is this is not a small place it's full of talented people within 48 hours of the brexit decision we had countries in south america phoning me other ambassadors saying can we do a free trade agreement with you straight away within 48 hours okay and that is not an exceptional case we have i can't go into the exact numbers but they're certainly in double figures and more countries waiting to do these free trade deals that opens up opportunities for bangladesh opens up opportunities for us op- opportunities for you as people who understand both countries to make that and to invent that business you have to invent new businesses we have an advantage we understand both places we can get business done in fact this country re- relies on you to strengthen that relationship because you have that unique uh, unique understanding on brexit i think not to be complacent but this is great britain and still ahead, the greatest times are still ahead of us if we if we collectively get our minds together and get the leadership to see us through nazim uddin ekjon byabshayi ebong eki sathe ekjon academic nazim uddin i want to ask a, a question uh, to you uh, how have you developed the mindset to reach to the pinnacle of the british diplomatic service i think we covered it a little bit by realizing that there is something you can always learn by being attentive try to listen to and try and understand the environment you in having some confidence genuine confidence and pride on who you are i never you know my profession my institution is full of people who've had a better education than me i suspect went to better institution oxbridge eton you know so. but it never phased me because of some of the exposure i had i knew that they may have some advantages but i have others okay so knowing who i am being proud of who i am having the presence of mind to learn from what you see from different cultures and not letting the bad times destroy you you have to survive the dip okay that's the only difference between very successful people 
and less successful people is what they do when they are down there. Sanwar Choudhury, our Arakjan Purujitu Muk, Arakjan entrepreneur and social activist, Sanwar Choudhury. I want to ask you something slightly different. Um, Yugoslavia used to be one country uh, a few years back. Um, Myanmar, a country where the Rohingyas lived more than 300 years as citizens, as uh, Myanmar or Burmese. Um, do you ever see a situation like that repeating itself in Europe, especially uh, in a country like the United Kingdom um, going forward? Is that something that we need to worry about? I, I mean, <laughs> what I wanted to say is no straight away. Uh, because that, that's what I actually think. The reason why I pause is because of the history of our civilizations, you know, of, of the human history. It seems to repeat itself when we think we've learnt the lesson for the last time, that we've got over hatred, we've got over a challenge, and that learning uh, stays with you. Um, but as you know, uh, Dr. Sanwar, that, that is not true. And there's always a small risk. I, I, the answer is no, I don't think so. And that's why I think um, what we can do, do to bring cohesion, to bring harmony, to bring understanding in our society and elsewhere is, is so, so important. And also to speak out, speak out. As, 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 as it's been said many times, it only takes people to stay quiet for evil to prosper. When you see wrong, even if it is hurtful to your own uh, self or community or whatever it is, speak out, say no, show disapproval. I think that, that those things are, are very important. Dewan Mahdi, a solicitor and also a television presenter. Uh, why uh, Western diplomacy has failed uh, wherever uh, they intervene, like Iraq, um, Afghanistan, uh, or Libya, or any other countries? Uh, what are your thoughts around this? And this is your easy question, right? <laughs> I'm glad you didn't ask me a difficult one. What are my thoughts on wh where does Western diplomacy uh, fail? Well, you know, there's the acid test in diplomacy failing is that it's when we end up in war. That is essentially the outcome, the acid test for my profession failing. We can't always save everything by talking because the other side doesn't want to talk, so it's not always possible. But essentially, so if we have ended up in in, in conflicts that's been costly, you can't say that's a successful diplomacy. Um, we have contributed in, and you don't hear of it because nobody hears of this thing that the, the war didn't happen, that didn't happen because of diplomacy. It's never talked about because it didn't happen, so what's the interest? So you hear the, the other side, and, and I would say that if you're serious in your job, you learn from what may have been not the best option um, given the outcome. I think you constantly learn uh, from those, as we have learned from the events that have happened in, in, in Iraq. Afghanistan is still in the situation that it is, it is in. We have a system in, our, um, in the civil service, in the diplomatic service, where we put up advice, giving lots of options, having done the analysis. It's up to our our ministers, uh, up to the government, then to take the decision. Do you believe in conspiracy theories, Anna No, I don't. You don't? No, so I don't. What are conspiracy theories? I mean, we... I, I, I don't believe... For example, 9-11, we always hear about conspiracy theories, and uh, ISIS, it's another conspiracy theory. So do you believe in those? No. Okay, so... Do you? What are th I mean, do you have any other term in diplomacy of those conspiracy theories? They, they're usually called nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so... so uh, well, I, it's, it's, it's bizarre, isn't okay. it? I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, but it, it is interesting. I mean, what is fascinating and perhaps worrying is that so many people seem to give credibility mm -hmm. to what is manifestly, you know, nonsense. Um, and so I'm not a huge conspiracy. Mm. This is not to say that everything you see or hear from government X or government Y or is, is true. This is not the same thing. Okay, but to wildly sort of make up something and, and just put it out there. And then given the media we have with Facebook, with Instagram, with Twitter and whatever else, you know, this, the, 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 
the modern term now is, of course, fake news. It's so easy to create this thing. I try to look at the evidence. Okay, I have to. It's the only sensible way you can evaluate anything. I think the problem, one of the problems with conspiracy theories, isn't there? This is just hypothesizing. I don't know the answer. I think some people like them because it gives them a sense of power over a situation. We don't understand a situation. We create a conspiracy, then we seem to have sort of gripped it. It's a lazy way of gripping it. Anam Choudhury. Anam Choudhury, um, he is a chief executive officer for Sandwell. Question to you, sir, is in regards to institutional racism. Yes. Uh, you mentioned earlier yes. about social racism that you may yes. have faced. But yes. have you faced uh, in institutional racism uh, within your career? You know, I was so thick-skinned. Um, I was... And this is, it probably helps to be a little bit thick-skinned sometimes. I didn't know w when I was actually dealing with institutional racism because I was so busy trying to do the best job I can. And I've been through some really conservative institutions. We know it exists. It's been proven by many people that it exists. My advice to you is to ignore it, not to deny it. That's totally different. Okay? Not to deny it, but to ignore it and focus on the thing that you can change. And you'll find some of this actually gets blown away. Um, but if you allow it to interfere with you, it will have a growing impact on how you behave and it will stop you bringing out the best in you. Kamarul Islam? My question to you would be, it's a frequent perception within the British Bangladeshi young generation that they don't want to work for Bangladeshi employers. Perhaps a various reason could be, one may say, it could be the payment, uh, wages, salary, or not treated fairly, whatever the reason is. Right. As a result, we have got a very few British Bangladeshi corporate companies thriving um, as opposed to the Western counterpart. Yeah. Now, with the role that you're involved in, the position that you hold, what influence can you bring to change this perception within the young British Bangladeshi generation? I would say simply this. Uh, if you are an entrepreneur, as you are uh, uh, opening up a company or operate a company, why take on just Bangladeshis? Take on anybody who is the best qualified. You owe it to your company and yourself and to your country to do that. That's fair. Why, why, why discriminate against uh, somebody else? Uh, Equally as we would expect a company run by an Englishman to take me on or take you on without discrimination. Um, so that's what I would urge you. For us to think of us, as I said, this is our country. We are British people of Bangladeshi origin. So I think that's worthwhile remembering. And, and then I would do all the things that you say are the problems, uh, you know, to counter those things. You know, pay people more, treat them more fairly if they are the problems. And show what a great thing it is to work for a company owned by a Bangladeshi entrepreneur because they're... I understand, from, at least from the restaurant trade, if I may just give uh, from things I hear, that a lot of um, people, you know, uh, Eastern European uh, uh, immigrants who work for Bangladeshi restaurants really enjoy the experience, say Bangladeshis are good employers, <coughs> it's a great place to work, you know, it's a lovely family orientation. And that's, that's what I hear, okay? That can be the case for whether we're running a software company, whether we're running an accountancy, whether we're running a trading firm. It can be the case anywhere. So this is the, this is the role. I mean, how many, what are we, about There's around half a million British Bangladeshis? Yes. Or maybe a little bit more. We all have this ambassador role for ourselves and for our community and for our country. Right? So I, and sometimes it occurs to me that here's a situation where I can do something that reflects well on, from, on the background I come from. Next question, uh, Muhammad Shahan Al-Haq, A-level student. Muhammad Shahan Al-Haq. My question is, what advice would you give to us young generation, British Bangladeshis, and the piv pivotal role we should play in society? Be ambitious. Don't let limitations and myths curtail that ambition. That's a tragedy. You must not do that. Get exposure, okay? Seek out contacts, seek out opportunities to experience different things. Don't be afraid of getting it wrong, okay? 
people forget. Study hard, enjoy life too. And follow your ambition and good luck to you. Maruf Hassan, accountant and the former consultant to the Prime Minister Office of Bangladesh. Maruf Hassan. Uh, my question is, uh, being a, a former British High Commissioner in Bangladesh, uh, how you actually um, value Bangladesh prospects in future and is there any weaknesses? And also, uh, how uh, uh, the professionals of Bangladesh, young professional, can get some skills on diplomacy and trade so that they can present Bangladesh in a better way uh, with the other countries? First of all, the last question first. Uh, Bangladeshis, I meet them all around the world, you know, even in Lima. In, 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 um, in China, in, um, uh, in Germany, in Spain, I meet them everywhere. Believe it or not, Bangladeshis are liked everywhere. It's, it's absolutely true. I, I know this because I, I've been to those places. So you, Bangladesh does not have an image problem with its people. People love Bangladesh elsewhere. My um, thing has always been the, the two things that has helped accelerate the development is education and infrastructure. Focus on those things. There is an overfocus, believe it or not, on politics. Okay. Obviously, good politics, good governance, um, clear strategy, all of that helps. Absolutely no denying that. That'll get but focus on practical things. And Bangladesh is already a very different country to what it was in the 70s and 80s. It's still growing at 6%. I believe the infrastructure is improving. All of those things are going the right way. But there are dangers that it needs to fight and make sure it doesn't fall into. Extremism is probably the most clear present danger it faces. And, and maintaining democracy and strengthening democracy um, is uh, something that it always needs to be vigilant on. Uh, Razak Amin, a businessman and entrepreneur. Uh, Razak Amin. I do believe I'm British. I've got four children, alhamdulillah. Yeah. And that was my son on the front row. Oh, now, <laughs> I try to integrate them in the British way of life yeah. as a Bangladeshi. Yeah. But I still hold a Bangladeshi passport. What yeah. would you say to that? Well, you're a dual citizen, that is what I would say to that. <laughs> I haven't applied uh, for a British passport. <laughs> well, you see, there, it's very clear. You are a Bangladeshi citizen living in Britain. That is not the situation for the rest of, I think, most of the crowd here, if not all of them. Uh, the, the other situation is when you're born here, you're a British passport holder, this is your country, um, obviously you have the strong linkages. So if you're a Bangladeshi passport holder, and Bangladeshi passport holder, then you're obviously a Bangladeshi living in the UK, then there's no contradiction in what you're saying. But I hope one day you will join us and become a British Bangladeshi soon. Thank yeah, you thank very you. much. <laughs> Dr. Ruabuddin. Dr. Ruabuddin, next question, please. I would like you to cite an example of a failure of some heavy uh, gravity which you have overcome, how you have overcome, and what have you learned from it? Actually, a very good question, but a difficult question. <laughs> um, the reason is this is because I don't, by nature, overfocus or spend too much time on on failures i think one of the things we need to do is learn from your failure and and move on quickly so and there have been many i can i, I can think of sometimes i wonder whether i'm being the best father i can be um, to the to my children sometimes i wonder whether i can be the best son or brother so there are personal things that sometimes in a reflective moment that uh, makes me wonder I sometimes wonder what I have failed to achieve that I was probably capable of uh, because of the lack of clarity, intelligence um, that I, I, I missed out on. You sometimes wonder whether was there anything that I could have done to avoid the terrorist attack that killed and injured so many uh, people. People who are wise they say to you that it is the failures in relationships in your personal life, in your family life, the relationship with your son, your daughter, your father, whatever. It is those things that you think about most. Those failures you think about most 
when you're on your in your last days. It's never that I didn't work too hard. Um, you know, I failed to work or get that promotion. I think very few people think about those things, and I wonder if that is the case uh, uh, case with me. Um, we we don't know, but it is a, a deep question, I think, to which I think you continue to reflect and learn. Ibrahim Mia, um, next question from Ibrahim Mia, please. First one, uh, as a Muslim, yeah. you have a duty towards a Palestinian, and I believe you'll be taking your post from uh, March uh, 2018. So uh, as a leader, do you, do you intend to speak up for Palestinian? As you know, they, uh, they live in the prison camp, and also uh, British government supplying the web firearms. Are you intend to speak up for them? And my second question is, boys watching, so you better be careful. If, if Bangladesh were to play Ireland 2019 World Cup, who are you going to be supporting? Obviously, I um, I support uh, support England, uh, uh, but if it's um, if it's Bangladesh versus any other country apart from England, it's Bangladesh. Okay, okay. absolutely no doubt, and it, and and I think we are going to be, I think we're doing great. And your other question, um, the as a diplomat, my job is uh, is not politics. Okay, and I work through b giving advice. Uh, to to ministers and trying to influence uh, policy. I am a Muslim. I am also a father. I am a diplomat. I am a Brit. I am many many things. Okay. So I think it's important that we look at that in a in a in a, in a, in a balanced way. My job is very clear, uh, which is to promote diplomatically somebody. Um, some of the ends that we want as a country. And as you know, we are a very strong supporter of the two-state solution in Palestine. We have, been, we have been promoting and supporting that very strongly. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Dr. A.K. Rahman, Principal Mechanical uh, uh, Analysis Engineer, Structural Integrity BAE Systems. Dr. A.K. Rahman. I am an engineer and I'm, yes. um, I've been an engineer for over 20 years working yes. for BAE Systems. Yes. I know you qualified as an engineer. Yes. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, how did you really then change your career to become a diplomat? The, 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 the steps that, that you went through. The short answer is that I was pretty rubbish as an engineer. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's let's start from there. I've actually worked for BAE Systems. I worked for Plessy uh, Systems, Plessy Radar, for five years, and as uh, as luck would have it, I progressed very quickly. Not because I was any good at engineering, but I was I was quite good at managing teams and issues. So I, I, I wrote. managing the engineers. <laughs> Yeah, who were much smarter than me, you know, and, and mathematicians and, and so on. And I increasingly realized that my talents, if I have any, lie in policy and in management and things. So the career naturally started going that way, and people started recruiting me in, into, into those roles. As I, and I became clearer that, because when you do a degree, this is what I said to this young man, sometimes when you do a degree, you think you must be your degree all your life. So I had this big problem. I studied engineering. I got to be an engineer all the way until I retire. Otherwise, I failed, right? Because I didn't make it. So that, I, I became more, I dealt with it. And then, we, um, and then the opportunities came quite quickly as I proved myself in policy and in general management. And I got recruited by... You know, people asked me to join MOD Center, then the Cabinet Office, then the Foreign Office. But some of that comes because you expose yourself to the right places, and you you do well, and then your reputation kind of. So it happened half and half. Half I pushed it, and half I got pulled. Thank you very yeah. much. I mean, our kache aro duty prashno ishche jara aajkeer ei onushthane ashte parni. The question is: the, Did you ever feel that you were? going to do wrong thing or forced to go ahead with the wrong decision being made because you were serving Her Majesty's government. So did you, make, did you make any decision that you didn't like? You always um, make, not decisions, but you, you can be very um, easily in positions where a policy is being carried out which wasn't exactly your opinion. But that is the beauty of our uh, service and our system of government. Different options and things will go to the minister, they will be discussed at the officials level and people will have different views. But once you have decided that this is going to be HMG policy, in our system of government you 
defend it, you do not express your private view. And the another question asked by another lady who couldn't attend yeah. tonight. Um, are there any unspoken laws of diplomacy? Unspoken <laughs> laws of... So you say things, but you actually don't do those things. I think that would be a very bad diplomat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because the, the whole um, concept on which diplomacy works is that you can trust the word, you have to trust the word of the diplomat. Because I represent UK. If I go and say to a foreign government, the British government is going to do this, that has to be an unbreakable thing, okay? That has to be true. The, there's a subtler variation on this. So we as diplomats, we don't. I don't know any diplomat who would lie. Not li it's not our culture. But you don't have to say everything. That's the difference, okay? I don't have to always answer. I, you ask me a question. If I find myself in a position where I'm going to have to lie, my position would be not to answer that question. So I haven't lied to you. Diplomacy, best diplomacy works on trust, that you have to be able to trust what I'm saying to you is true. If I haven't said anything, then you are free to assume whatever you like. There's probably a reason why I haven't said anything. Anna Chaudhuri, I'm going to show you what I'm going to say. I'm going to show you what I'm going to say. I'm going to show you what I'm going to say. Uh, it's difficult for me to talk to you because I'm part of you. I see myself as part of you. What do I want? I want you all to succeed fabulously in whatever you are doing and wish you the very best of luck and every success in your future. Yes. এবং এর মাধ্যমে আমাদের ব্রিটিশ বাংলাদেশি কমিউনিটি ইন্সপায়ার্ড হবে এবং আপনার কাছ থেকে আদর্শ নিয়ে যার যার ক্ষেত্রে সফল হবে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ थैंक यू वेरी मच इंडीड দর্শক সবাইকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ বিশেষ করে ধন্যবাদ আজকে আমাদের এই অনুষ্ঠানে আপনারা যারা অতিথি হিসেবে এসেছেন লন্ডন এবং লন্ডনের বাইরে থেকে সুদূর ওয়েলস থেকে আমাদের অতিথি আসছেন বার্মিংহাম থেকে আসছেন লন্ডন থেকে আসছেন এবং অনেকেই এসে আমাদেরকে আজকে সঙ্গ দিয়েছেন এত রাত পর্যন্ত আমাদের এই হাই হিটেড টেম্পারেচারের দিস ইজ হোয়াট ইউ কল স্টুডিওতে দিস ইজ আ ওয়ার্ম এনগেজমেন্ট ওয়ার্ম এনগেজমেন্ট স্টুডিওতে এসে সবাই আমাদেরকে সময় দিয়েছেন এজন্য আপনাদের আপনাদের অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ দর্শক আপনাদেরকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ দীর্ঘক্ষণ ধরে এবং প্রয়োজনীয় একটি অনুষ্ঠান আপনারা দেখেছেন অত্যন্ত गर्वित एक ही साथ आनंदित जनब अनोर चौधरी डेजिगनेट गवर्नर फर कैमेन आईलैंड जिन्हें के समय दिए दर्शक कम्यूनिटर आज के समय दिए व्यस्तम पारिवारिक राष्ट्रीय जिसब दायित्व रही है से गुलिर आलोके से समय से खान समय बेर के समय दिए प्रत्याशा करी एक जन अनोर चौधरी नये कम्यूनिटी और अनोर चौधर जन्म हो आज के जर के लिए अनुष्ठान कर भविष्य आगामी कैक बचर मध्य ये सबा के लिए अनोर चौधर मत ये चैनल से अनुष्ठान करते पर से ही दिन प्रत्याशा नहीं आज के मत अनुष्ठान ये शेष कर सबाई भलो थकबे शुभ सन्धा